Shuts off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> And welcome, you're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on NBC News Radio, CNBC News, and NBC Sports, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Audible, Tiki Live, Amazon Music, uh, GeoSound, Podchaser, and Rumble. Why so many places? Because I want to maximize my splatter zone for more hope and happiness. So I have topics and guests and special series to that end. If you miss my show with the Waltons, you can get that on my YouTube channel. Free subscribe there. And you will be tuned into my daily morning show here where Asian Oprah has you focus on your own reality show. So there's no gossip, no scandal, no K-words, no K uh, Kanye talk, no Kardashian talk, but just talk about you and how we can make this world a better place. And I'm so delighted that this morning I have none other than the daughter of Lucio Ball, Desi Arnaz. Lucy Arnaz, she's an entertainer and an advocate and supporter of the Doors of Change. And I have the founder as well of Doors of Change. You will remember him from coming here, uh, uh, I guess, a year ago, Jeffrey Sitkoff. And uh, we're going to have some fun. I'm going to give you a fuller uh, introduction after we do our gratitude exercise. And Jeffrey, I'm hoping that you remember this. Uh, Lucy was kind enough to say, I will participate. And it's a breakfast, having breakfast with us, taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich. So the top of the bun is eight specific gratitudes. What are we grateful for outside of ourselves? And then on the bottom of the bun, it's what are eight things that we appreciate about ourselves? So collectively, we'll get two each. I'll start. Uh, I am grateful for uh, the fact that uh, we're getting rain in California. As much as I'm not crazy about rain, it is good for us. And uh, I'm glad that it is raining outside right now. What are you grateful for? Let's go to Lucy. Do I have to come up with eight or is that just one? Just one, a collectively oh, eight. <laughs> it's sort of hard to only just come up with one, almost as hard as trying to come up with the perfect eight. But, um, you know, I am grateful that I have a beautiful family that keeps me going every single day, fresh in my mind and seeing the planet in different ways. And they keep me understanding what I need to be putting my energies toward. And that keeps me young and involved. Fantastic. Uh, Jeffrey, your turn. I'm so grateful for my health, the health of my wife and my loved ones. You know, you never We have our loved ones that have our health. <laughs> Lucy, you want to tell him? <laughs> Jeffrey, we can't hear you. It's just breaking up like crazy. Couldn't understand anything past health and wife. And then it went. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm grateful for. So we'll continue on as Jeffrey adjusts. And um, if you could close out any other uh, audio device, maybe there's the computer that's on or close out the windows. And Lucy and I will finish off the, the, um, <laughs> the gratitudes while he does that. <laughs> I love my life. I'm grateful that uh, we have technology yes. that is incredible when it works, <laughs> allowing us to broadcast from anywhere in the world <laughs> and even when it just doesn't want to cooperate. 
sarcasm included oh, is a service that I offer. Lucy, what are you grateful for? Humor. I'm grateful <laughs> for our ability to laugh at stuff like this. Because you can't get upset. It's just goofy. It's crazy. And to think, we've tried to do this interview several times. And, every and I, I refuse I refuse to take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> I have not said it just means it's not meant to be because I refuse to believe that. No, it's meant to be this way. Yes. Whatever yes. Whatever this is. Shift happens. Uh, I'm grateful that the planets did not crash into each other last night. So we have another day to laugh, to create, to innovate, and appreciate. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I'm grateful I got a chance to go to Africa. I had a chance to travel way across the other side of the universe and see a whole other culture and be very moved by what I saw and have an opportunity, like what we're doing with Doors of Change, to help all those things you think you can't do. I can't do anything about that. Oh my God, it's so far away. And then you go, yes, I can. Oh, look what I can do. I can do this. It was great. Wonderful. And Jeffrey, you want to come in with the last gratitude? I'm so grateful that we can help others have a better life. Fantastic. Now we're going to go to the bottom of the bun, which is what do you like about yourself? And the reason why I do this is a lot of us are walking around going, who loves me? Who appreciates me? Who likes me? Literally with the likes now on social media. And that just causes us to go looking for love in all the wrong places. And so I want us to strengthen our muscle on how we approve of ourselves so that criticism and even compliments don't whack us around. So what do you appreciate about yourself? I'll start. I love my ability to just keep on trucking. <laughs> That's my, one of my uh, secret sauce skills. Lucy, what's, what do you like about yourself? Yeah, I was kind of going to say a similar thing. Just, I, I think that uh, what I like best about myself is that I don't take anything too seriously for too long. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of one of, my dad always used to say, there must be a way. And I sort of look at life like that. Like when it gets, you know, difficult, I just go, okay, all right, there's got to be a way to fix. There's got, there must be a way. And, and don't lose your cookies over it. So tenacity and uh, patience. Perfect. Although whenever anyone thanks me for being patient, I look over my shoulder yeah. to see who they're talking to. Yeah. I, that's not in my vocabulary. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey, what do you appreciate about yourself? I appreciate about myself that when I put my mind to something, I do not give up until I get that achieved. Uh, and, uh, you know, especially helping others, that's the most important as far as I'm concerned. Fantastic. And I'm just going to cut that short. We're going to finish that. The reason I do eight, Lucy, by the way, is eight's a lucky number in Chinese. I know you thought I was Swedish. It's no, a, I did. It's a homophone for good fortune. Okay. So that's that why sense. I do that. Fantastic. Now, let me see, because I just had eye surgery yesterday. I'm going to, am I still on camera? Yes, you are. Perfect. Because <laughs> yes. I, I, I blew the intro up so that I could see it. Right, right, right. Here we go. Um, recently, seven of America's most recognized TV moms gathered, including Mary and Ross, who I've been so fortunate to have on my show from Happy Days, Jane from Malcolm in the Middle, Kaz Marak, uh, Karen Grasby from Little House on the Prairie, June Lockhart, Lassie, Lost in Space, Eileen Graff, Mr. Belvedere and D Wallace, who's also been on my show, uh, the new Lassie, and most recently Michael Learned was also on my show from the Waltons, and they came together to support the Doors of Change to help the homeless youth in America. Previously, an impressive roster of celebrated performers, including Elton John, Billy Joel, the Rolling Stones, Bill, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Carlos Santana, Tony Bennett, and Three Dog Night, either participated in the performance or sent their signed keyboards or guitars. 
And I got to be part of that. And hold on one second. Uh, Jeffrey, your mic is still spitting a bit. So let me turn you for a second. Um, but uh, all of that, and I got to go see Three Dog Night and it was an amazing time uh, uh, getting to watch them and all the money we raised there. And I'm so proud that I continue to be a massive supporter. And that's why these two incredible beings are on the show with me again today. Now, Doors of Change is thrilled to add a woman with a truly undisputed Hollywood legacy, Lucy Arnaz, who you see on camera now, to the family of advocates for homeless youth. She's the daughter of Hollywood's most influential and beloved parents. Lucy herself has made her own mark. In both Broadway, they're playing our song, Dirty Rotten Scoundrel, Witches of Eastwick. Oh, I didn't know about that one. Uh, as well as TV, the Lucy Arnaz Show, Sons and Daughters. Here's Lucy. In addition to performances at the Academy Awards and at the White House and so much more. Today, she's speaking out on behalf of those whose voices are not being heard. Homeless youth across the country. She's chosen to do so with the Doors of Change, which has not only proven their success with youth in San Diego, but helped member and create reaches, outreaches in Chicago, Buffalo, DC, among others. There is so much out there in the world that needs attention that can be overwhelming. I'm starting in my own backyard and hoping for a ripple effect. Think globally, but act locally, says Lucy Arnaz, and what better place to start than with our own youth. So first of all, please welcome to my studio, Lucy Arnaz. <laughs> and now I'm going to introduce the man that you actually have seen before. His name is Jeffrey Sitkoff. He's the president and founder of Doors of Change, also known as Photo Charity in the past for over 20 years. Jeffrey's been the leading, uh, been leading an amazing group of committed volunteers to help homeless youth ages 17 to 25 get off the streets of San Diego and now in 13 different states. Over the time, over this time, the group has helped place over 2,300 homeless youth, and I know that number is way up, and we'll talk about that, uh, into long-term safe housing and developed an award-winning music and arts program in Ocean Beach. Uh, has benefited more than 8,300 homeless youth. Elton John and all those other people that I just mentioned have been uh, phenomenally involved. Uh, he's received awards locally and nationally, including the San Diego Channel uh, 10 Leadership Award, Tory Pines Bank Circle of Excellence Award, La Mesa Rotary Peacemaker of the Year Award, and the Jewish Family Services Volunteer of the Year Award. He was also a sem semi-finalist in the National Volvo for Life Award. Please welcome to my studio back again, Jeffrey Sitkoff. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm a big fan of affirmation. <laughs> and that is, I'm so delighted to have you both. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed that this is going to go. This is this is how much I've wanted you on my show, Lucy and Jeffrey, is uh, we've tried and, uh, and it's happening. And I'm so grateful. So first of all, tell me why this is such an important thing for you, Lucy, because you could be really supporting so many other things. You mentioned uh, Backyard, but what about this particular program uh, tugged at your heartstrings? You know, I mean, I think just the fact that it's about youth and um, I'm particularly, you know, uh, sensitive, I guess, to the, the plight of young people when I realized that a lot of them didn't get to choose their circumstances and whether they come from homes with drug addicted parents, abuse, or they're found out that, uh, you know, they're, they're gay and then their parents go, get out. There's it's just children. It's a very moving thing. I don't know. I had a pretty good uh, growing up period, but I do understand not having parents around and what happens when that happens? Uh, my parents were great, but they were busy all the time, so they weren't there a lot. 
And I have children of my own. I have five kids, three of my own and two stepchildren. And at various times of their growing up period, they're all adults now, but they went through stuff, you know, and some of them had to be on the street in order to figure out what life was really going to be for them. And uh, I got a chance to experience what that was like by, you know, real circumstances that were very close to home. So I, I can only imagine every time I see some, some young kid that's, floundering and has nowhere to go. It just breaks my heart. I didn't think I could do anything about it. It's a huge, huge problem, as you know, and it's, it's global. It's not just local here where we are. And, but, you know, tell the universe what you want and be specific. If you even just put it out there a little bit in your mind, like, God, I wish I could help. You sort of just say it, you mean it, but you don't do much about it. Funny how things happen after that. Like, our, our mutual friend, Harlan Bowl, who is a public relations person and has been pro bono helping Doors of Change for a while, called me and said, would you be interested at all in uh, get, you know, getting together with Jeffrey Sidkoff? And he runs this great organization and it's homeless youth in, in the San Diego, you know, Southern California area. And I thought, wow, that's incredible because wasn't I just sort of talking about that? And so as the song says, when opportunity comes your way, say yes. And I said, yes. I said, I don't know what I can do. Uh, you know, I'm not a philanthropist. I don't, I, we don't own I Love Lucy. Let's just start with that. And I've been a theater person and a theater person's salary most of my life or doing concerts. And that's what I do for a living. So my donations monetarily would not make a huge big difference, but maybe my notoriety might. And if I can use it that way, that's a good way to use it. So here I am. Fantastic. And I'm so grateful that you are. And I, I, I love the fact that you um, uh, want to help in, in the way you can. I am a little surprised that you don't own that. Um, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. But most uh, people are surprised. They think I'm a very wealthy person, but I would own Viacom by now. Um, no, my father and mother sold it back to CBS in 1957, 1957, like before they even finished the show, um, in order to make enough money to buy a studio so they could get their company, Desilu Productions, bigger. And they bought RKO Studios at that time. And they did. They became the largest television produ producing company in the country, in the world. And um, yeah, but so they didn't, they no longer after that, they didn't own anything that has to do with Ida Lucy. They retained my mother's image in the show. So we own the likeness, image and likenesses of her as Lucy Ricardo and a portion of him as, as Ricky, but that's only for like merchandise and stuff. Um, but yeah, we don't own the show. And a lot of people think that I do and that I've had a silver spoon in my mouth since birth, but no, it's true. I make my living just like everybody else. And, and you do it well, you were sold out just recently. I love what I do. And I chose to go into the theater mostly. I've done a few movies and, and a few television series, but mostly my life has been theater or concerts in the last 30 years. It's been a lot of concerts. And it's not the kind of thing that is nationally broadcast, nationally written about. And, and yet I work all the time. So a lot of people don't know what I do because if I haven't come to their town, they haven't read about it. They don't know what I'm doing. And it's interesting. I, I make CDs and make music and and I just love what I do. So that's why when you said, what do you want underneath your name? And I said, entertainer, because basically whatever it is, if I'm singing, I'm dancing, I'm acting, it's all entertaining, isn't it? Sort of. Right. Well, you, you know, you've got two trees that you didn't fall far from. <laughs> it didn't hurt. I got a lot of good people to watch and to be inspired by. Plus they loved what they did so much that they did it all the time, which is why they weren't home a lot, you know, they, right. but they loved it and they brought joy to other people. And I always tell my kids, if you pick something to do with your life that makes other people happy, then that's good. Then mm -hmm. you got it made because you get up every morning and be glad for what you're going to go out and do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got three people in a row here that uh, are fortunate to yeah. feel that way. Yeah. And, and yeah. my wish is that everybody does Definitely for that, for that. Yeah. So great, Jeffrey. Remind people uh, in a short um, summary of how you got involved, because I asked him in, in our first interview, did you know you were going to do this when you grew up or when you were young? Was this something that was on your uh, bathtub list, which is bigger than a bucket list? <laughs> well, 
I, I spent life making lemonade out of lemon. And I was a physical therapist for many years. I had a spinal cord injury. Decided, you know, what was I going to do to my next chapter? What was, I'm not just going to sit in the house. What I was going to do, and it just kept back to saying helping youth because youth today are in trouble. The energy is bad in youth right now. I'm a healer, being a physical therapist for 18 years, and I sense the energy in them. And you saw the Columbine shooting, the Santee shooting, all the escalation of violence. I just said, there's got to be a different way for these youth, you know, to have a better life. And so that's how I got into at least looking at what I was going to do to help youth. I had no idea about homeless youth, but I went on outreach one night to see how they actually meet homeless youth, how they affect them as far as helping them. And that one experience, it blew my mind. And that was tw over 21 years ago now. And I've been doing this ever since. I made a commitment that evening on the beach and Pacific Beach. These are the youth I have to help. And so we've helped uh, a lot of youth, thank God. We've helped about 15,000 homeless youth over 21 years get services and supplies, et cetera, resources. But we're most proud because we helped over 2,600 now get safe housing. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Now, I know that things have changed a little because of COVID. Do you want to uh, give us a little update on that? Sure. You know, COVID changed everything. It shut down our award-winning music and art program we had for 18 years. And we said, okay, we, we, we have to help the, how are we going to do it? And so we just kept, you know, thinking outside the box and we came up with what's called the state the homeless youth advocacy, advocacy program. We're advocates for these youth. We really are because they don't have active parents. They're so dysfunctional. They have no parents basically. And so we started doubling the amount of outreach that went on the street to four days a week to looking for homeless youth. The thing is now since COVID, they've changed tremendously because you used to be able to see youth all the time out in groups of people, groups of youth. Now you don't see them at all. They're hidden. They're afraid about the pandemic because if they get the virus, they could die. They have a very bad immune system compromised. And so, you know, it's, they're very freaked out about the pandemic. And so we said, okay, we still got to get a hold of these youth. So we started putting up posters everywhere about what we do, what we can offer them, thousands of posters throughout the city. And the result has been absolutely unbelievable. In the last three years, we have doubled in most of our services, amount of youth that we've helped, including housing. So we went from 161 youth two years ago, which was a record. This year, 349 youth we found housing for 188 more than the year before. So, Hold on, I had to give the applause. That's unforking believable. You doubled, COVID usually brings things down. I don't know how you did that. Well, I kind of know wh wh how that happened. If you can tell, Jeffrey's not a person that just gives up. <laughs> And his, the ability for him to have all the big names that you have behind you that have uh, contributed guitars and things like that, that's truly amazing. And, and I'm sort of answering the question I'm going to ask Lucy uh, again. What was it that drew you to um, not just, you know, you're heartbreaking when you see them. There's a lot of places that say they do things. So what was it that you knew that this was something you wanted to support? It was Harlan. It was Harlan Bull because if someone you know and you trust and he's never, you know, sent me down a wrong road, it's never done anything where I said, oh God, why did you get me involved in that? That's <laughs> never, that's never happened. So it was truly, that's networking. You know, if you know a friend who knows a friend, da, da, and he said, this is a terrific organization. Let me send you some information on it. And if it moves you, if it touches you in any way, I can tell you they do great work. Well, that's all I really need to know. I mean, uh, this thing, when I just said, I just went to Africa, you know, we're opening a scholarship for these kids who can't afford to go to this one little school in this tiny little town. And their parents, they walk to school, like they're four years old. They walk on the streets on these crazy roads with the animals. It's, you can't even believe the kind of poverty that they have. And how do you start taking care of them unless there's at least one person you can trust, right? One person who can open the bank account, one person who can make sure that the kids are actually getting the money that you're doing. 
And so I trusted Harlan and he trusted Jeffrey. And so here I am. I, I believe in what they're doing and they've been doing it a long time and they're making a difference. And it, it's the kind of thing that I like doing, just like I liked opening that little school because there's only a few of us who are actually supporting these kids. I mean, I, it's we're yeah. very hands-on, you know, and he's working in a small area and you can keep an eye on it and it's doable. It doesn't get so big that you lose track of what you're involved in. And, and that kind of thing I, I appreciate. Like I said, think globally, but, you know, act locally. It's local. Mm -hmm. You can, you can uh, check up on it, you know? Right. Right. For sure. For sure. Now, um, what is the what is the difficulty right now in um so, so why did you move to advocacy in terms of you used to have just an arts and music program and i know the answer to this i just i'm trying to set you up because i think that people when it comes to homelessness as you mentioned lucy it's this giant thing you start yeah. thinking about it and it's just like yeah. people are trying to find the solution and it's just so overwhelming so mm -hmm. what bothers me is when i see people click their tongues or shake their heads homeless yeah. you know and all that yeah. and then there's no there's not enough compassion to do anything or if there's some compassion you, you you know what do I do like exactly. uh, bring people in from the street into my home you, you know what uh, I know someone who th they feel helpless but they do bring uh, water so anytime they see a homeless person they yeah. give them a bottle you of water can do Teddy, right? Teddy Roosevelt once said you do what you can with what you have with where you are and I think that's really great advice you do what you can with what you have with where you are. And, and little, doing that, I actually took a homeless person into an empty condo that I had for a while before I put furniture in it. And it was so hot outside, people were dying in the streets in Palm Springs. And this guy was pouring water over his head. And I said, excuse me, you know, do I take a shower and just be in air conditioning for a night? And I, I thought he, he could kill me on the way to the apartment, right? I don't know. But I took a shot. I believed in. I, I went with my gut. So you can do stuff like that. I mean, it's not something you could do every day, maybe, but... You do what you can with what you have. I had a place. I, I thought, you know, if he runs away or he, there's nothing to steal, it's empty. <laughs> How bad could it be, you know? And he was so grateful. His name was Peter. And he left me a little note and said how grateful he was. And he only stayed one night. He didn't. I said, mm. you can go a week if you want. No one's here. He stayed one night and he left me a lovely note, and shut the door and put the key under the rock that I told him to put it under. So it's, you know, it's kind of wonderful to to move out there and, and just connect, only only connect. Isn't that what they say, you know? Yeah. And Mother Teresa, you know, she often said, if I hadn't stopped for that one man, if I hadn't stopped for that first one, I never would have done all the things I did. Mm -hmm. I start somewhere. You know? Yeah, yeah. Here's points I'd like to bring up. Firstly, yes. most of these youth are not homeless by choice. They don't want to be homeless. So that's right. very people understand. Their parents are so that they have to get out of the house. It's not safe for them, number one. Number two, you talked about trust quite a bit. And these kids don't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. I think the reason that we have been so successful is because we, when they, they're coming to us now, they actually contact us that they need help. Instead of us going to them now because of the posters, they're actually coming to us and saying, you know, I, I want to get a laptop. I want to get a cell phone. You know, I want help. Can you help me? And so we carry our phone 24-7 in the morning. We have one of three staff that picks the phone at all times. That's a different thing because then they realize, hey, we really are there to help them. And so once they trust you, they want to get help, and they, they're motivated to hopefully have a better, better life than what they have. And that's why we've been blessed to have so many youth that have succeeded in our program. Absolutely. Can I, do you mind if I show that little um, video of Doors of Change? Sure. I think that's a really um, helpful explanation. Let me see if I can get this to play. Here we go.
the thing that made me leave home when I was 12 that was so bad was my new stepfather. He started to abuse me physically, emotionally, mentally, would call me names, drag me by my hair, hit me, kick me. He was basically torturing me. On the streets, it's quite difficult, near impossible to trust people, really, because they were always looking out for themselves. I had to do the same, look out for myself. The longest time period I didn't eat for was probably like three days. I was chain smoking cigarettes for warmth. I figured the heat from the smoke, you know, would keep me warm for the night. I slept in a lot of crazy places. I would sleep like on park benches and parks. I slept on the beach a lot. I eventually had a tent. Well, there was one night I slept in a dumpster on top of a piece of cardboard. Thankfully, it wasn't trash day. I was able to sleep in front of anybody, no matter what. It was like, hey, if they kill me, they kill me. And you know, if they would try to rob me, they robbed me. It's like, that's just what it was. I would perform in the streets to get some money. I would just do tricks with a soccer ball. The toughest thing about being homeless is the loss of hope and trying to hold on to that. I first heard of Doors of Change through outreach. Jeff was walking around doing outreach. We're going on outreach, which we've done now for 18 years, twice a week, trying to find homeless kids between the age primarily of 16 to 25. When we find them, we ask them if they'd like to come to a music and arts program. They get free music lessons, free art, free dinners, free food, free clothes, case management, whatever they would like. We've seen now over 7,300 visits now in six years. The staff of Doors of Change are kind. They're always in a great mood. They're always asking to help anyway. It's really nice. It feels like a family. Words have changed has helped me because I was homeless at 17 because my biological dad got involved and he punched me in the face uh, repeatedly. And now I'm about to graduate from college, computer engineering, homeless degree. <laughs> Pretty, pretty clear line. <laughs> it's really important that people that are able to donate to Doors of Change can provide the financial support that we need to continue to provide opportunities for these kids, whether it be music instruments, referrals, life skills, you know, anything that they need help with. They need a lot of support. And even if it's just $5, I mean, really anything can help these kids. And the bigger the donation, the more children are going to end up with opportunities like me that they can make something of themselves and make an impact in this world. And that's why it's so important that we have donors. They really make the whole organization run. Oof. You can't watch that without crying. I don't know. That just gets me every time. Yeah, it, it got me again. And uh, let's see if we, there we go. Um, dang, I, I just got to do this. Um, I gave it to you last time, but I got to give it to you again. And I've never given it to you, Lucy. Uh, Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award goes to Jeffrey again and Lucy Arden. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I'm not supposed to cry because of the eye surgery. <laughs> oh, no. Is that what they said? Probably good. It's washing it. It's good. No, I I, I, I never apologize for crying because tears are the disinfectant that keep our hearts soft. So mm. thank you for my cleansing today. Mm. And, and, and really, Jeffrey, I mean... I have a lot of people because I said I'm a solutions show. So I bring people on, you know, who are, who are doing something, but I have to say, I, I, I'm so proud to be, you know, a supporter of doors of change because truly you do make such a difference. Salvation army, you and, um, a Long Beach Rescue Mission are the three organizations that I have actually seen with my own eyes, a progression of help that isn't about, you know, let's make a lot of money and then it goes to the, 
the I, I see the, the salaries when they publish the CEO of some of these nonprofits. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, don't, don't tell me that uh, you're really making a difference. If you're making that much money, you're not really making a difference because uh, so, so thank you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I've got some good news for you, lady. So oh. the, who you saw in there, the African-American that spoke, he now has a young child, Theo, and he just got a, he got a raise. So he's making over a hundred thousand dollars as a an engineer and he is just doing so great. And Justine, who spoke, is graduating law school in 30 days. Oh my gosh. That's so, so wonderful. That's, well, hold on. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> so, yeah. so the next show we do for Doors of Change, you're going to bring those two individuals on, Jeffrey, okay? Oh, that's a great idea. Sure. Wonderful. Yeah. So how do people support Doors of Change? I mean, that's obviously the call to action to start with. And are there any plans for another benefit? Yes. Well, number one, yes, there are plans for another benefit. I'm actually been the last two months uh, negotiating for headliners. So we will have a headliner hopefully within a month uh, and it'll be in the, in the end of the summer probably. Uh, but the reason as far as, you know, people say I'm touched by this, what can I do to help? Because of the economy, some people are not doing well and it's difficult for a lot of people. We started a thing called the, Angel, the California Commission the Trademark, the Angel. So for dollars a month at a minimum, Okay, say that again. How much a month? A minimum of eleven dollars a month or more. Oh. If you can do fifty dollars, twenty dollars, whatever you can do, but a minimum of eleven. Yeah, that's that's one. that's nothing. That's eleven dollars a month is uh, one <laughs> Starbucks a month, <laughs> right? $1. So, and what is it called again? It cut out just a bit. Angel team. You you join our angel team. Angel team. Okay. Yeah. And it is actually part of the angels? No, no. They oh, gave okay. it and to trademark the name. So that name is ours now. We've trademarked Angel Team. Nice. And you go to doorsofchange.org, okay. door girl, and make a donation of $11 or more per month because the recurring monthly thing really helps us a lot. Mm -hmm. to people giving us monthly money. It makes a big difference. So whatever anybody can afford, we appreciate you're, you'll be on our team. Great. I'm going to pull up the website right now. And this is. Uh... Also, while you're pulling it up, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, I'm just curious. I saw those wonderful things that you give away to the kids, Jeff. Um, the shoes and the books and the backpacks and the stuff like that. Do, can people d donate, like ship you stuff if they don't live in the area? Do you ex still accept things from other people or is it, would you prefer just uh, m monetary donations so that you can buy things yourself? How do you like that to do that? That's a great question, Lucy. Um, up until COVID, we loved it. Now since COVID, we've got so much clothes and shoes. We have a whole huge, um, you know, a storage thing that has them. So we don't need them. At, but okay. that's what we need because we're growing so much. We just need to hire another full-time. You, know, you need another case manager? Is that what you said? Yeah, we just hired a second one. Okay. All right. So basically, you need salary money. You need money to, to pay for the things that you have to do. Yes. Yeah. And the and the good thing is that those monthly donations, if they're five or if they're 50 or 100, it's something you can depend on, right? Because they said they're going to send it, and then you can kind of have a budget you can work with. That's what I've found. Yeah. And it even works better than that because we have to go to our website. You know, you're breaking up, Jeff. You're breaking up a little bit. I don't know what you're leaning into, but you're breaking up a little bit. Go to our website. On the website, it'll have a monthly donation. So the, the, the credit card will be on file. You don't have to even think about it. Right. So oh, my God. I just saw Billy Crystal sign book. Yep. Billy Joel signs Roland keyboard. I knew yep. about that one. That's incredible. Chris Isaac. items? Is that what this is? They're for sale? On sale right now. People can go to the website and buy the memorabilia. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Isn't it? 
It's a Bruce Springsteen Born to Run. It's sold. Never yep. mind. Jerry Seinfeld signed photos. Yep. 5,400. 5, Jewel uh, signed guitar. Wow. So just, on the top right is the Join Angel team. Can you see my cursor? It's up at the top here. So I'm just showing people. This is the website. Can you see it? No, but. No. No. Oh, okay. So boss gags. Oh, I see it now. Yeah. So let's see. If I press this, what's going to come up? Here we go. About homeless youth angel team. $11, 3672 one time or recurring, I would suggest recurring because it gives the organization a financial base if they want to have some yeah. uh, loan action or anything like that. So right. yeah, that's, that's awesome. But man, that's, that's awesome. Graham Nash. I How'd you get this connection with all these rock and rollers and famous people, Jeffrey? Buddy guy. Billy, Billy Joel was the first angel, and then Elton John was the second angel. But once they came on, it really gave credibility that we were okay. We've been blessed this month alone. Steve Martin signed me two banjos. Uh, John Mellencamp signed two guitars. Uh, who else? Uh, you know, that's not cheap. You know, these guys spend a lot of money on that stuff, and they give them to you, sign them, and give them away is kind of amazing. Very it is amazing. It's Very wonderful. Good. Yeah. I actually got a picture with the guitar that was signed by Three Dog Night the night that uh, we did that concert. I felt pretty special. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, yeah. So, exactly. how does it feel knowing that the concert that you went to generated enough money that we funded? 349 youth in housing the following year. Isn't that great? It's <laughs> only because you said you loved it, Lucy. And honestly, it, it's the only uh, 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 sound effect I have because <laughs> we have to celebrate it. Because like you, uh, and I was so happy to hear uh, you talk about that. You know, you think about something and then it, uh, that's law of attraction. That's and I it. don't know if you're a Call big. the universe what you want and be specific. I always say. It, exactly. I'm a big uh, Abraham Hicks law of attraction yes. kind of person. And I totally believe that too. We set the intention and the universe is always conspiring for us, never against us. Friendly Correct. universe. So, so that's I good. think that that level of the thing that I love about Jeffrey is I don't know if you can see I mean we were so frustrated with you earlier because <laughs> you you just couldn't get on again and it was that that but you Jeffrey is has that natural it's gonna be okay uh a uh, part of it part of you and I just wanted to uh, yes. point that out and I think that's the reason too that it is doing all that it's doing. And I, mm -hmm. and I wish you all the success again, as you continue to do this, that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know and anyone, if you have ever said, I wish I could do something with the homeless, that's right. this is what you can do at yeah. $11 a month. That's, that's all right. you need to do. And yeah. then you're going to meet Lucy and I and Harlan. That was so fun when I was dancing with Harlan because he was my date for the last uh, thing. And uh, we we had such a good time. Uh, so keep it tuned. I will, I'm going to purchase a ticket like I did last year to give away as my Asian Oprah giveaway for the show to the benefit concert, whatever it's going to be. And I know it's going to be great. But in the meantime, please go to doorsofchange.org doorsofchange.org and uh, uh, angel team uh, buy something, you know, now's the time. Some people are uh, uh, getting some money back uh, from the government. If you haven't heard of that program, uh, if you have employees, uh, I'm forgetting that amnesia, they said for the anesthetic is 24 hours. It's kicking in, but um, I'll, I'll remember to mention it on the show later, but uh, please do 
go and buy one of those. If you're a, a musician, you know, weekend musician, those are beautiful pieces to support as well. Indeed. Can I make one that our that pro director has one woman here? Okay. We're going to have to go back. Can you re, uh, start again? And this time, uh, let's see. I want to do something different. Let me remove you and put you back in and see if that doesn't do something. Okay, go ahead. So I just want to share that we have an amazing team. And our program director, Joanne Newgard, won Woman of the Year in 2002 from the San Diego Magazine, which is a prestigious honor. She had 250 people that were in that category, and she won because of the work she does with homeless youth with Doors of Change. So Joanne Newgard is an amazing leader in our organization. And she was on my show last time with you. And so we will have to have her on when I bring those two individuals and give you a break <laughs> so that uh, we'll, we'll share the love for sure. So what, what can, um, what can we do in our homes and personally? Let's, let's switch this around a bit so that we can affect where it starts? I would say that people that want to help, and you know, there's a lot of elderly that are homeless, but they will see youth also. Keep in your car bottles of water and maybe apples. So mm -hmm. when someone, instead of you know, giving them a, a quarter or whatever, give them an apple, give them a, a bottle of water because they need the water, they're too de dehydrated. So that's something that everybody can do is have water and apples in their car, and then you're making them happy and you're helping someone. Yeah. I might suggest that if you live in a climate like we do in Palm Springs, that you don't just leave those bottles in the car, because if they get too hot, you can't give them to anybody because they become poisonous and cancer causing. But um, if you can grab a few bottles on the way, keep some in your house somewhere and take them with you in a bag and then take them out of the car when you go back home so that you can still have the water be good. But that's a great idea. That's a great idea. And yeah, remember when they used to say we can't give fresh fruit at Halloween to anybody because they were afraid like somebody would poison the fruit or put, right? razor blades in it. So that would make me nervous about giving, you know, to just other people might not take it, you know, because they don't know who we are. Maybe we're somebody who hates homeless people, you know. Uh, so, but I hear what you're saying. And maybe if you get like a small bag from the market and it's full of fresh fruit or something, but that's the right idea. Take something with you and give it up. I, I can't mm -hmm. imagine anybody saying, no, thanks. I'm fine. Yeah. Right? Now, yes. And you triggered <laughs> uh, 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 great ideas, both of you. The thing that I would like people to do is to drop the BS, the belief system Mm. that one, um, they're lazy. That's why they're on the streets. That's the first one. Thank Number you. two, that, um, you know, this is just, uh, just, you know, people are doing this because they don't want to be bothered to get a job. That's another BS, a belief system that hurts and is not true. Mm -hmm. And three, that it is up to the government or mm -hmm. someone else to do mm -hmm. something about this. It's not my problem. That's bullshit hockey. This is all of our problem. It's all of our opportunity to open our hearts and our wallets and our mind that this is we are all connected. So if we've got some people who are in a bad place, it just, the whole, we are all a reflection of where everyone is. So that's my, um, what and we I'm don't know how lucky we are. We think, Oh, I don't really have enough. Like I really can't give anything to them. I, like I said, I just came back from Africa, from Kenya. Trust me, we have enough. You have enough. Uh, and the people who don't have enough, over there are helping each other because the little nothing that they have, they split it in half and they give it to the other person next door who doesn't have as much of a half as they have. And you realize how short life is and what's it all about anyway? Uh, you know, surrounding yourself. I came home to my nice house here and I thought, wow, how dare I ever, how dare I ever have a bad day or 
you know, look at stuff. And, oh, I can't stand this. Oh, you know, that's the minute that look, I have chairs. I have heat. I have water, you know? Uh, and when you don't have anything or you're put out onto the street against, you know, your wishes, you find out really quick what having nothing is like and how, how much the other people really have. So, and the last thing I want to say is when you give for no good reason, you just, cause you want to, there's no better feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make yourself feel good, go do that. Yes. Great, great points. Jeffrey, final word. You know, when you see one of these youth succeed, it gives hope to other homeless kids that it is possible. They right. can back with homelessness, as well as it's possible for donors to say, you know what I mean? I can see that my donation, it really does make a difference. So it really helps everybody. Their success is our success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, every time I see a kid, I look in their eyes and I say, you can do anything that you put your heart and mind to, no matter what's happening to you now. I'm one of the seven out of 10 of us who've had childhood trauma. And I had to realize that I don't have to carry that stuff from my past into my present and future. So if you're one of those and you are in a position where you cannot stay at home, there are places like Doors of Change that will help you. I am Dr. Marissa. I want to thank Lucy Arnaz so much for uh, being persistent and making this interview possible. <laughs> I bless you. How can people find you and uh, your CD and your music and your well, entertainment schedule? It's a wonderful thing out there called Google. Uh, All you have to do is Google me. You'll find everything there ever was. You'll find way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Lucy Arnaz and Jeffrey Sitkoff, doorsofchange.org. Do what you can. Put your, uh, uh, put your heart and your money and your time uh, towards someone and an organization that's really helping. If you would do this with me, I close every show with It's All About Balance. Peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace. This is Dr. Marissa reporting live from my loving room, wishing you the best day ever. We'll see you tomorrow. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. Woo!